Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be unboxing an ultra block kit and these are external write blockers and this kit was loaned to us by Digital Intelligence. You can see a link down below for the kit and for the company. So thank you very much Digital Intelligence. So let's go ahead and open this up. So this is a Pelican case and this is kind of the, the standard case you'll see with these write blocker kits. And whenever we open it up, we have three external write blockers on the left hand side, and then all of the connectors and adapters and power, power connectors that we need on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and go through the write blockers first. These are external write blockers, and whenever you take them out, you can see the quick reference instructions, and these do describe exactly how to use the write blocker, so make sure you keep these little tags with them. So taking out the write blocker, This right blocker on the side, you can see SATA, you can see the power connector, and then IDE. So sometimes we still run into IDE drives, so you might have that, but usually we'll be using the SATA connector here. And then on the back, we have the connector to our forensic workstation as well as power input. On the ends, we don't have anything for this one. So this is a SATA IDE right blocker, and I'll be showing actually how to use these in future videos. So if we flip it over, you have the indicator, you can turn on the right blocker, you can see the status lights and we'll go over what each of these status lights mean whenever we're actually using the write blocker. So the procedure for using this and it describes it in the quick reference guide is connect our source drive on this side with power and the data cable and then connect our write blocker to our forensic workstation and then the very last stage is connecting the power to the write blocker. So uh, it, this does take a specific order. Some people have them powered on and then connect everything up but they recommend connecting the source first, connecting our destination, and then having the power turned on after that. So we'll talk about actually how to use these a little bit later. And for now, I'm just going to unpack the kit. Next, we have another write blocker that works pretty much exactly the same way. But it looks a little bit different. This write blocker is specifically for USB. So notice we don't have a USB-C connector, but we can get an adapter if we have a USB-C connection. This is for USB write blocking. On the other side, we have our connection into our forensic workstation. On the back, we have power, and then we have the uh, USB 3.0 bridge, and we have a little bit more options here. You do have a menu item because you can do some configurations with the USB write blocker, but remember that USB most of the time has its own flash controller, so USB drives can uh, potentially modify themselves. So be aware about how USB is working because you should use a USB write blocker, but uh, even using a USB write blocker might not always protect from, from changes in the source device, but uh, at least you from your forensic workstation will not be able to connect to the USB device and make changes. Okay, so that's our USB bridge. So next we have the PCIe bridge. It also has a menu option along with power. Uh, on one side, it has a weird looking connector and basically we stick an adapter in there whenever we want to do any type of PCIe connections. And then on the other side, we have our connection to our forensic workstation. And then on the back again, we have power. So setting these up and connecting to these pretty much all work exactly the same way. We're looking to connect our source device first, then we connect our forensic workstation, and then we turn on the power, and then we start doing our configurations, whatever we need. Now, for these external write blockers, you do want to make sure that you are testing them. Um, it's possible that they go bad, although I've never had one of these external drives go bad. I have heard of, you know, sometimes just something goes wrong. So depending on where you're at, you might have to test it before every time you use it. They're not difficult to test, and we'll talk about that later. Or I've seen labs that test them, for example, once a month to make sure they are up to spec. So uh, it's very quick. Once you have your testing methodology down, testing these is very simple. Uh, as long as you have some test source data. So those are our three bridges. And basically what these are doing is you have some sort of connection coming in. Uh, you have a connection going out to your forensic workstation. You have power and that's, that's it. The whole idea of this is what we want to be able to read from the source device, but we don't want to be able to write anything back to it. So that ensures that we can make a disk image, for example, and guarantees that we're not writing any of our own data to that disk image. So. I always recommend using external write blockers, especially like this, because they're so easy to share amongst a lab and even take with you on a scene or something like that if you need to. Let's look at some of the accessories. So first, these blue cables are the cables that are connecting to your forensic workstation. So we have a USB connector type, and this is the connector going into the write blocker. We have two of these cables included for the three write blockers. Next, we have an IDE power cable. 
So we connect the power into the tabular write blocker here, and then the IDE cable connector for the drive actually goes in here. Okay. Next we have an IDE data cable. So the blue side goes into the write blocker, and the black side goes into the source drive. So next we have a PCIe M2 adapter. And the idea is you might have a little PCIe M2 uh, device. You can just slide it in there and then move this peg around and then you can image the drive that way. So on one side, we have our, our source drive that we want to plug in. And then we have this little connector in the back that also requires an adapter. This connects into the right blocker directly. Next we have SATA power cable. So this, uh, this end connects into the right blocker itself. This end connects into SATA power. So basically you have your SATA cable, which is up next. We have a SATA data cable and then the SATA power cable. Uh, this side's going to connect into your right blocker, into your right blocker. The other side is going to connect to the data port and the data section on the drive. And this is the power section on the drive. Okay, so I'll demonstrate those later. So next we have a SATA to micro SATA adapter. If you have a micro SATA dr drive, you can connect that in, and then you can use the SATA power and data cables, connect them, and then connect that to the write blocker. And then you have write blocker for also micro SATA. Next we have a little adapter for the PCIe. So where you saw these slots, for example, we plug that into there, and then we plug the other end into our PCIe write blocker, and then we have access to that. So that provides power and data to the drive that we're trying to work with. Okay, next we have power cables. This is a US standard power cable for the write blockers themselves, and there are two power cables included. So the power bricks are in the top. So the power brick, power cable go together, and we have this connector for the power of the write blockers themselves. Next we have a USB 3 forensic card reader, and the idea behind this is that it has a lot of different card adapter types that you might run into, and then it has a USB 3 connector. So we can use this in conjunction with the USB write blocker, um, connect everything in, and then all of these different card types will also be write blocked. And then finally, we have another M2 adapter. So basically it takes in an M2 SSD and an M SATA SSD, and it converts it to SATA 3. It's just a little adapter, very similar to this one, except it looks more like uh, the size of a normal hard drive, but the same idea. So I've cut that open. If we open this up, we have first our adapter plate. And just like before, we have our SATA connector here. And then we have the little pins where you can put either your M2 or your M SATA uh, SSD, so it fits down in there. And then we have, I think it's the back plate for it. So an instruction set, and then this is the holding plate that makes it seem kind of like a hard drive with a nice digital intelligence logo on there. Okay, so it's just another adapter. You can essentially open this case up, uh, put this along with the drive that you're going to image into this case, and then it just works exactly like a normal hard drive kind of form factor, except that everything's enclosed and safe. So, so that's a nice little feature. So you can customize these kits and get any type of write blockers or as many write blockers as you want. So for example, if you had a big lab and you know that you're always looking at SATA drives and USB, you might get like three SATA and two USB or whatever your lab actually needs. Again, I like these external hardware write blockers because they are so easy to share. The whole lab can use them, obviously not at the same time, but if you have a small lab and a limited budget, I find these to be very, very flexible. Some of these accessories are optional, but I would really consider this kit very basic. If you wanna start doing imaging using external write blockers, uh, along with all the different connector types, this kit is gonna get you really far. So that's pretty much it for this unboxing. Next, I'll show you how to connect up your write blockers, as well as how to use several of the accessories to image common drive types. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.